Let me start with a question. Did you have recently had a fine dinner? A nice restaurant, several courses, nice starters, a nice main menu, and of course, the most important part, dessert. I really like dessert. So, if you ask me, Angola itself is a lot like this dinner. It contains a lot of things, a lot of courses, probably more than you can eat, and everything you need for your full-flagged single-page application. I don't know about you, but I do not eat a fine dinner every evening, mostly because of a lack of time, and so sometimes everything I want to have is just a greasy pizza. Just a greasy, greasy pizza. And when we take this metaphor and when we transfer it in the world of Angola, we will find out that we don't need a full-flagged single-page application all the time. Sometimes everything we need is just a component. And that's why the Angola team created Angola Elements. Angular Elements is about providing web components, which are framework-independent components. You can write them once and reuse them everywhere. To be more precise, it is not directly about web components, because web components is an umbrella term. It is about the most important standard behind web components, namely custom elements, which is implemented by all the modern browsers nowadays. This brings a lot of possibilities. One possibility is you can create a component library you are able to reuse everywhere. You can also enrich existing applications, for instance, your PHP application, your ASP.NET application, or your Java Server Faces application. You can also enrich CMS-based websites, and you can dynamically load them. Dynamic loading has never, ever been that easy as with web components. And this is what this talk is about. First of all, I will show you some basics to get everyone into the boat. I promise I will just invest one slide into this because I have promised to talk about advanced stuff. And then we will talk about dynamically adding elements, as well as lazy loading them, and then we will try to push the border of what's currently supported. We will try to use external elements. And I will also talk about the most important topic here, it's bundle size. But first, let me introduce myself. I am Manfred. I'm a trainer and consultant for Angular. I'm helping a lot of companies nowadays. I'm part of the Google Developer Expert team and of the Collaborators team. My current product is also about Angular. It's a workshop for Angular and architectures in the enterprise. It contains a lot of advanced stuff. Okay, let's get started with the basics. As promised, just one slide. So, Angular Elements is just about wrapping Angular components. That means you take an ordinary Angular component, you call this function here, this function create, uh, called create custom element, and this function exposes a custom element. That means your Angular component goes in, the custom element goes out. And then you can register this custom element with this browser API called Custom Elements Define, and now the browser can just render your component. It is as easy as that to get started with standard conform components. So now let's talk about the first advanced topic. Let's talk about dynamic elements. Dynamically creating an element is really easy. You can leverage this 20-year-old API, document create element, perhaps you remember it. And normally, you are putting in here the name of a baked-in element, table, image, form, something like this. But the nice thing about elements is that the browser treats them exactly like baked-in elements. So you can use the same API to create your own custom element. In this case, it is a dashboard tile. Then you can use the same old API to define properties, to define attributes, to hook up event listeners, and finally you can add it to another element so it gets displayed. Perhaps you are saying now, hey, Manfred, what do you do, do, you do here? You are using the document object that is kind of forbidden in Angular. 
Well, yes and no. So in the past, the drawback of this was that the document element does not exist for server-side rendering. But since some versions, Angular is using Domino to simulate this document object on the server side, and so you are on the safe side with this. Of course, I'm not recommending to do this every time, but when it comes to highly dynamic scenarios, this really comes in handy. Let me show you a demonstration for this. I have prepared this uh, sample application with a dashboard, and when I'm clicking here, then just my dashboard dial is dynamically created. It is dynamically added to my page. And this is really fun. Hey, I could do this the whole day. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so I will show you more regarding this demonstration in some minutes. Let's go one step further. Let's talk about lazy loading. By the way, a good friend of mine told me I'm very authentic when talking about lazy things. <laughs> I'm not sure what he meant, but I think it was some kind of compliment. Anyway, so normally when we talk about lazy loading, we are talking about lazy loading routes. But here it is not about routes, here it is just about lazily loading a component. And this can be done in two steps. First of all, you have to register your module with the lazy component in your Angular JSON, and then you can use the ng module factory loader to load it just on demand. Let's have a look to the code. This is what it looks like when you register the module in question in your Angular JSON. There is just a property lazy modules, and here you put the path of your module, and then you need some code for loading it. For this here, I'm using a service. This service gets the ng module factory loader injected. It gets a method with a constant path. It is also pointing to my module in question. And then I'm calling loader load. I guess this is what, what happens when you are taking object orientation too seriously. You are ending up with loader load, debugger debug, locker lock. Here it is loader load. I'm busting the path and I'm getting back a module factory. And this module factory has a create method. And when I'm calling it, my module is instantiated. As this module is providing custom elements, I can use them immediately just by leveraging the document object we have seen before. It is really as easy as that. Without custom elements, this is far more difficult. Without custom elements, we would now have to leverage some low-level APIs of Angular. But here we are good to go, just use the document object. So let me also show you this in action. Here I have my dashboard again. Let's reload it. And if I click on Add Lazy, my Lazy dial is just added. Let me prove that Lazy loading took happen. For this, I'm switching to my network tab. To my network tab. Come on, here it is. I am pressing Add Lazy, and here we go. Yeah, this is my Lazy bundle. It is quite big. The CLI created it for me after registering the module with the Angular JSON. And as you see here, it has quite a big name. But no worries, this is just in debug mode. Uh, in production mode, it has a tiny name. In production mode, it just becomes a number. When we look at the bundle size, we also see it is quite tiny, 7.7K. And this is in debug mode, so in production mode, it would be about the half. So this is quite OK, if you ask me. Please keep this in mind for later. We will need this number a bit later. OK, let's go one step further. Let's talk about external elements. This is where I try to push the limitations of things that are possible or at least official supported nowadays. So when I speak about external elements, it is about having a first project with some custom elements, your widgets or your things you need for your design system. 
Then I want to compile those elements to a bundle. And after that, I want to reuse this bundle with several other projects by loading it. Perhaps I load it dynamically, or I load it just when the application starts. As mentioned before, this is currently not officially supported, and I will show you why in some minutes. But if we wanted to do this nowadays, we needed three steps. First of all, we needed to create an own application that just contains the custom elements. And then we have to compile everything to a self-contained bundle. And this bundle can then be loaded into our consuming application. I'm just calling it the consumer here. And when you do this, when you compile your application with the custom elements, it looks normally like this in the CLI. You are getting five or more bundles. Five or more bundles. So this is okay-ish for a full-flagged single-page application. This is not okay for a tiny element, for a tiny widget, for a dashboard tile. No one will buy this. So what we need is some way to get just one bundle. And there are several workarounds for this. I have provided one. I have provided one using the open source project NGX Build Plus, which is extending the CLI. It is teaching the CLI new tricks, and you can install it that way. Just ng add it to your project. And when you did this, you have this single bundle flag. And this single bundle flag is doing what it is supposed to do. It produces just one single bundle. You can then load into your consuming application. When it comes to script loading, there are several script loaders out there. Here you see the most simple one. It is just creating a script deck in a dynamic fashion. It is assigning the source. The source is pointing to the bundle in question, and then the script deck is added to your page. So let's have a look at this in my dashboard demonstration. So here I'm clicking on add external, and hey, my external tile is loaded. Very nice. It is really also loaded on demand. You see it here. It just entered the browser when I click this button. But you will also see something that is not funny when you look at the bundle sizes. Ooh, when you look at the bundle sizes, do you notice the difference? So our lazy bundle just had 7.7K, and our external bundle had 427K, which is a bit of a difference. And now think about having not just one of those bundles, now think about having several of those bundles. This would not work for a highly scalable application. So we need something better. And this leads me to the last topic of this presentation, where I want to talk about bundle sizes. So what happens here? As a matter of fact, each and every bundle got its own uh, dependencies, its own libraries. Each and every bundle with custom elements gets its own uh, Angular version, its own RxJS version, and so on and so forth. And I don't know about you, but I think that loading Angular several times is not a good idea. So we need something better here. And one solution to this issue can be perhaps Ivy. So at least in theory, Ivy will solve this issue because Ivy is capable of compiling your codes down to something that is very close to Dome and JavaScript. We will see in some seconds in which circumstances this will work and in which circumstances this won't work. But I think we all know the statistics where the Angular team showed us the potential of Ivy so that it is able to compile everything down to very tiny, tiny bundles. Not much of Angular will remain here. This is one solution saying this, the Ivy integration is a post Angular 8 thing. It will come after Angular 8. But when it comes, then the question is, when can it help? 
And the answer is it can mainly help with UI-based widgets, widgets that are using ng-if, ng-4, ng-style, and data binding. Then you are on the safe side with Ivy. Then this can downlevel to code that is very close to JavaScript. When it comes to libraries, Ivy will not help much because Ivy cannot make your library disappear when you have a big authentication library, the Angular router, or if you have something like, let's say, a Bitcoining algorithm, it cannot make this library disappear. It can just try to do tree shaking, but this is everything the CLI is capable of to do. So when you're using UI-based widgets, you are on the safe side. With libraries, you need something more. And in this case, you could try to share your libraries. This is what you have done with jQuery. You have loaded jQuery once, and then all the other libraries have reused jQuery, which was sitting in the global window object. This can be done here. It is not officially supported by the CLI, but my community project, NGX Build Brass, provides a solution for this. Saying this, there are also some drawbacks. It increases the complexity, and you will end up with a non-default build. So please just use it when you really, really need it. Otherwise, you will just blow up your complexity. OK, so let me sum up. We have seen that we can reuse Angular elements with other technologies. We have seen that we can dynamically add them to a page, for instance, to my dashboard. We have also seen that lazy loading is really simple. We have seen that nowadays we can try to extend what's possible. We can try to push the boundaries when we are loading external elements. And we have seen that Ivy will do, hopefully, a good job when it comes to UI-based code in this area. And for other codes, we can try to share dependencies. So, one last thing, and please always remember this, sometimes all we want to have is a greasy pizza. I think this is the key, key takeaway of this whole presentation. Sometimes we just need elements. If you like this talk, I've written a lot about this. And you can look up everything in my blog. And if you don't like this talk, well, perhaps I'm writing better than I'm speaking. Who knows? Saying this, tomorrow, I have a workshop regarding this where we will go more in depth. So if you want to know more about this, if you want to try out everything, just make sure to drop by at this workshop. So that's it. Have a nice day and thanks for having me.